Hey everyone, so at the end of my recent video with Angular Signals and Forms, I slipped a cryptic warning about not using signals with Reactive Forms API because they don't go well together. Well, in this video, let's see why that is and try to use signals with Reactive Forms. Now, we're going to use the same example as we had with the template driven forms. We have two name fields, the first name and the last name, and we have we will add some validations to them. Then there's a full name here, which shows the first name and the last name added. And this is going to be a computed just to test out the signals. And then there's a button in which we are going to set the value of the signal so that we can see whether the value of the form is also set. Okay, so let's add Reactive Forms now. So we are going to first add the imports for the Reactive Forms module here. And then we are going to create the form controls that we need here. So we are going to do first name control is equals to new form control and give an initial value of empty. Also, we want to give some validators. So we want to give the required validators as with the template driven forms. Then we'll also have the last name control. This would also be the same with an empty and the validators dot required great so you can see we have two form controls that we need to specify and these will contain the values of the forms as well so let's bind this with the input and let's add here the form control directive and inside of it we are going to do first name control let's copy this and the same with the last name and we're going to do it last name control okay now let's also add the material error here and for the material error we are going to add the same thing that we did with template driven forms but we're going to refer to the first name control itself which we already have we don't need to add any accessors for that the first name control dot has error and we're going to say required and here we're going to say that the first name is required similarly we're going to copy this this below this here and we're going to do this last name control this is also going to be last name great so we have our errors in place and let's see how this works so if you write the values if we remove them you can see that we get the errors we remove this we get the error so this all works so the form control is set up but now how do we get the values in signals and how do we ensure that there is two-way data binding which we need or which we had for the template driven forms as well so how to do that here uh, we will have our values of the control in the first name control and the last name control and as so it happens angular provides these values in the form of an observable using the value changes observable. So one way to do that is for example to just use the two signal rxjs interop function to convert those observables to a signal. So let's try to use that. Let's do two signal here and let's import that from angular core rxjs interop. So two signal and now it gives a quick fix for it. And then in this two signal we are going to do this dot first name control dot value changes so now value changes is only called when um, the control changes value it does not include the initial value so for a signal for this signal we are going to give an initial value of empty here as well in that case okay similarly let's copy this and let's do it for the same for the last name and this this is going to do last name control dot value changes and this okay okay so let's see whether this works and if this works we should have our full name computed correctly so let's add Swayb here and Khan and you can see the full name computed is calculated correctly. So this means that first name and last name is signals. But the problem here is that it's just one way binding. So this is binding back from when the value is changed. You can bind it back to the signal. But what do you do to actually get the value from the signal and bind it back to the form? So if for example, we change it through this button click or if we for example, change the signals value through some API call or you have some um, other process which changes the value and you want it to up update on the form control as well. How do we do that? So one thing we can do in that case is to use an effect. And for an effect, it's important to have it in a constructor because you need an injection context. So we will have an effect here. And in this effect, what we can do is we can simply do this dot first name control dot set value. And in the set value, we can do this dot first name. Okay. Similarly, for the last last name control we can do the same thing set value this dot last name great so now whenever the first name value is changed the first name signal is changed or the last name signal is changed this effect will be called and this is going to patch our form controls here with these values so this is our two-way data binding but there is a problem and there's a catch now let's try to update this and let's try to have a handler here in the button here let's say we do click and in this click we are going to do let's say first name signal dot set 
and we'll we'll try to set this value to for example my name so if, and you can see i get a compilation error which is that you can't set this value and it says this set does not exist on type this now why is that now that is because to signal will only return to you a readable signal only it will not allow you to write to this signal because it's just one way and this is just how it is so but we need to be able to update the first name and the last name signal to any value that you want so that we can have two-way data binding so how do we handle that then then that means that we can't really use to signal to convert the observable to the signal because we would want to update the signal as well from the other side as well so so what do we do here we are just going to change it back to the original signal that we have okay and then we can do one thing in the constructor we can also do this dot first name control dot value changes and we can explicitly subscribe here with the value and here in the subscription we can do this dot first name dot set here we get the value now it gives an issue here because the value can also be null so i'm just going to give a nullish coalescing operator here to handle that case and the same thing we can do with the first name control the last name control dot value changes and we're going to set the last name to this okay so now the signal is a writable signal which you can write as well and we can read as well and we can read it when we change it and we can write it when we click on the button here so we can so you can see it gives no errors here anymore so let's try this out okay so now let's click on this when we click on this the signal is updated and finally we have achieved two-way data binding with reactive forms but let's see at what cost so the cost you can see here now even though the template code is simpler than template driven forms but you can see that we have two copies of the first name control or the values for it so we have a value within the first name control itself the last name control itself and that is how the reactive forms are designed and then we also need to have another copy which contains a writable signal for our form control values this we need so that we can also update those form controls so and then you can see that we need to have an effect in which we need to set the values explicitly to the control itself and then we also need to listen for the value changes and when you listen to the value changes obviously you also would need to add some unsubscription logic here so overall you can see that it is more code to handle and for large forms this can get messy now i know we can use the form group and it might make it a bit better but overall it will be more code and that is why i, I had said in my previous video that uh, we should avoid using signals with the angular reactive forms api until of course angular sort of provides some built-in binding or it provides uh, signal based apis for the reactive form control but before that happens uh, uh, I don't think it's suitable to be using Angular Reactive Forms with the Signals API currently. Okay, now if you want to compare this, um, the Reactive Forms example that I just showed you here with the template driven forms, what do you see? So first of all, the first thing you see is obviously uh, you have some more code here in your templates itself, themselves. The Reactive Forms API is better in that sense. But if you look at the code, it is much simpler. In fact, just three lines of code. And here we have duplication, in the values then we also need to have all of these subscriptions and handling to handle all of those cases and it would be reasonable to say that the signals api actually is a na more natural fit to be used with the template driven forms api so that was just my two cents and uh, let me know what you think about this and let me know in the comments below thanks for watching